What's up guys, Tenant Your Lifestyle. We're gonna build an air intake that is going to hopefully help fix a problem that I know many of you guys have, and that is dust plugging up my air filter. Today's video is brought to you by Empire Abrasives. All of the shaping and smoothing you will see in today's video is done with abrasive consumables from Empire. This company provides high quality products at bargain prices, and I highly recommend them as a means to save money on your next project. Click the link in the description of this video to go to their website and check out how much money you can save. And if you wanna save an additional 10%, use coupon code DIRTLIFESTYLE at checkout. Last summer, I took a seven day trip with a bunch of friends down in Southern California. Where I live in Washington, it's very wet. We don't have problems with plugs with plugged filters like this because it's not that dusty up here. But in Southern California, it completely plugged this thing. And uh, you can see it filtered just great. But the problem is it plugged so bad that the air started to pass around the seal and it coated the inside of, uh, all of all of my piping between the air filter and the engine with microscopic dust. And so we know that a bunch of microscopic dust got into the engine and long-term that's a huge problem. It's basically sandpaper on all those moving parts and that will wear things out prematurely. So we're gonna turn to the aftermarket. I've got a whole bunch of parts and pieces that I got off of Amazon, including a bunch of pre-filtering media. We're gonna build a custom intake box and piping system and hopefully make it to where we can uh, knock out a couple birds with one stone. First off, I removed the air box knowing that it was a problem um, so I could basically put some other stuff in its place. So we're gonna build a small air box right behind this other stuff up here and hopefully we have enough room to do everything that I'd like to do. But the end goal is to make it to where we don't have that problem right there where there's just tons and tons of dust and dirt on the inside of our motor. I'm gonna start by trimming up this factory intake pipe. The first thing I'm gonna cut away is these silencing chambers that are put there from the factory to make the V8 sound not so much like a V8. Then I'm gonna reroute the intake into the place that we need it and adapt everything using parts that I found on Amazon. And for those of you that are wondering, I will put a link to the Amazon parts that I used in the description below. first part of this job is by far the easiest and that is visualizing an intake path, ordering the appropriate fittings from Amazon and bolting it all together. The only change I'm gonna make from what I've already done is I'm going to trim about an inch out of the silicone hose to make it to where I can pull this filter away from the fender a little more to make room for our, to make room for our air box. A lot of people just stop here. I mean, we have a functioning intake, but if we build it this way, this is not gonna fix the problem we had with that last filter. And that problem is that it got super, super plugged up um, after seeing a week straight of dirt roads. And this will suffer the exact same fate if we don't do something about it. So what I wanna do is build a big pre-filter that is basically integrated into our air box. So what I'm visualizing is a big intake box that is lined with coarse filter media to make it so we have a big pre-filter that I can hopefully build in a way that's easily removable. So halfway through the week, if I need to, I can break out the uh, air nozzle and I can blow out all that pre-filter media, bolt it back on here and extend the service interval of our filter. Now it's a low bar, right? That last filter didn't even make it a week. If we can at least make it a week, it's a success. So I think that this is very much worth the extra effort um, to make. Now making it functional, making it look good, this is gonna be a big challenge, a very big challenge, but I think that it's, it's worth the time. Now I also want to integrate the two intakes for my two compressors because these are gonna suffer the same fate as this engine if they get a bunch of dirt in them. And the uh, the foam filter that comes with these um, with these compressors, I don't think is gonna be great. So I'm gonna to have to somehow adapt the air cleaners on these to be a remote mount style, run tubes into this air box so it also sees some pre-filtering. Um, and I'm also gonna upgrade the filter that is on those as well. So this is gonna be a lot of work and it's just gonna start with me breaking out some thin gauge aluminum and all my metal shaping tools. Piping complete, it's time to move on to building the box. And I'm gonna use some 18 gauge aluminum that I just keep big sheets of in the shop, specifically for jobs just like this one. 
This thickness is very easy to work with, but it still retains its rigidity throughout the building process and even whenever you're done. got the bottom part of this airbox fabricated and locked in there you can see how little space we have I mean I did not do myself any favors by adding a bunch of stuff to this side but I didn't want to compromise I wanted an extra battery I didn't want to put a battery or the compressors inside the cab I wanted it all to be under the hood and this is just the reality of the situation I have to work around the rest of this stuff just because I, I'm not get willing to compromise on the locations of these two guys right here. So now moving forward, I want to build a backing plate next that's going to go behind the filter. I'm going to basically make it a U-shaped so the filter can drop down into it and then I'll make a, an opposing U-shaped um, piece of aluminum that's going to fit down on top. I think the, the, the top piece will probably lock into the lid that we're going to build and this lid is definitely going to be the hardest part of this entire build. Working with thin gauge steel and aluminum is really intimidating for a lot of people, but I assure you this is actually pretty easy. It's fast to shape, it's easy to manipulate. The hardest part by far is welding, and even me, someone who has done a lot of this kind of work, struggles with not burning through. To help aid me in the shaping process, we have a couple new tools here today from Eastwood. This shrinker stretcher combo is something I've had my eye on for years, and this project is going to be a great example of when to use it. To start, we're going to use a clean 90 degree piece that I'm going to make out of the same material we're using on the rest of the box. To accomplish that, I'm going to use my 3-in-1 metal brake, shear, and roller that you guys have seen me use in the past. Then we're going to put the piece in this stretcher and we're going to slowly stretch the edge until we can get this tight 90 degree turn that we need to make. Unfortunately, we need to make such a tight 90, it's going to make it so we're going to put some little splits in this aluminum, but because of the way we're building the lid, it's not going to matter at all. This guy right here is the most complicated shape I think we are gonna make today, and I'm happy to have it done. So it's not like I didn't completely weld anything yet, I just kinda have it in a shape that it should be a, way, a foundation for us to build the rest of the lid. So I test fit it on the bench, I haven't actually fit it on the vehicle yet, but I'm pretty confident that it's gonna fit. So there we go, it fits the profile perfect. And now, whenever I build the rest of the lid, I have something that I can weld to here and it's gonna be a flange. Everything else I should be able to make flanges basically just with a metal break, but this flange is a complicated flange. I'm very happy I had that metal stretcher to kinda of get me in the ballpark so I could shape it the way I want it. This next part is not as difficult as this, but it's still a little bit complicated because the filter protrudes out of the top of this flat surface that is our air box. The filter is just it's too big for a space this small, it's that simple. So I have a couple of ideas on how to figure that out. <laughs> I think that the first workaround we're gonna do is I'm just gonna grab my shot bag, I'm gonna grab a rubber mallet, and I am gonna try and just shape a bubble into this that'll fit around our filter. Then I'm gonna take it over the planishing hammer, we're gonna planish that surface to smooth it out and try to make it presentable. If that doesn't work, then I'm gonna use this as a template for a certain kind of plastic called Kydex. I bought a bunch of this for some, uh, for some uh, pistol holsters and, well, one pistol holster and a bunch of knife holsters I plan on making. And if you heat this up, you can put it on a, uh, well, the shape that we bend with our mallet, and then whenever it cools, it will take that shape. So then we remove this from that, and then I can just basically grab a, a new piece of aluminum bend it the way we need it, cut, an cut a hole that is going to 
allow this filter to protrude past the top of the lid, and then we can bolt our Kydex. I don't know if you'd call it a mold. I guess it would be kind of a mold. We didn't really mold it. Our Kydex plastic over the top of it, and that should allow us to have enough space for what we need. I think that might look kind of sweet with this uh, flat black and our bright aluminum. So we'll see. If I screw up this first part, it, I can just easily transition into the second part, but I won't really know until I start beating this thing up with a mallet. As you can tell, I decided to use that piece that I was forming as a template to mold our Kydex the shape we want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut a piece of MDF plywood to fit underneath this. Um, we're gonna heat up our Kydex on my wood stove because I've been using it to uh, heat the shop all day. I just put a clean piece of aluminum on top of the wood stove. Once it reaches like 275, 300, I'm gonna throw this piece of Kydex on there and once the Kydex reaches, 275, 300, let's see where we're at right now. We are at 154, so it's gonna still keep climbing for a little bit. But anyway, once it's once it reaches the correct temperature, we're gonna put it in a Kydex press, and the top part of it is just gonna be foam. The bottom part of it is gonna be MDF, and I think I'm gonna put it in my actual press, just because this, this is gonna be super easy um, to deliver the clamping force we need. At least I think it will, and I mean, a lot of this is experimental, but in theory, after 20 minutes of letting it cool in the press, we can undo it and then we can put it back up here and uh, basically bolt it all together. I think that that's gonna be the best way to give us the contour that we want and not have to worry about polishing up a piece like this. If, if I spent a lot of time, I could build one of these, polish it up and I could tack or TIG weld it on there. But I kinda wanna experiment with Kydex and I think that it would look pretty dope. So we're just gonna experiment and see what happens. This is a complete failure. <laughs> it bums me out to admit that, but it's just the reality of the situation. Um, this is not going to look a way that is gonna make me happy enough with it. So I, I can't get the wrinkles out of the backside of this Kydex, and it looks like I could smash it down to where I could make them really small, but if there's any imperfections, I will not be happy with it. So I'm starting to realize that this is the wrong way to go about this. I've been thinking about this throughout this week as I've been building this thing. And what I need to be doing is building a box that houses a panel filter like this stupid thing and make it probably connect to a snorkel. My wife doesn't like snorkels, um, but we don't have to put a snorkel on her discovery. We'll put one on mine. I don't care. At this point, I think that a snorkel is the way to go with a sealed box um, that uses a panel filter because with the panel filter, I don't have to deal with this little guy right here. And I mean, this is gonna be so close to the hood anyway. Whereas if I can make this flush all the way across the top, if I built another one of these, 
and I built the inside of the box to use a panel filter, this is gonna make way more sense. Also, I can use some of this filter material in front of the panel, panel filter, and then all I have to do is unclick the top of the panel filter box, blow this material out on the trail, put it back in, and I can make it to where that panel filter will have an extended service life. So I, I wish that I would have thought about that at the beginning, but sometimes it's just the reality of fabrication. You take chances, and uh, sometimes you can weasel your way through the problems um, which I normally can, but this is just one of those situations where I am not happy with the outcome of this. I could finish this, and initially I was gonna trim this to look kinda cool, and then I was gonna put some dimple dyes and then use some filter material on the inside of the dimple dyes and stuff, but realistically, I would need a larger box to be able to do that and make it the way I want it, and I'm just really trying to work with not enough space and not the right skills, essentially. And I'm just, I'm at a point where I gotta abandon this. So, plan B. I, I ordered stuff for a plan B just because I need to get this Land Rover off-road. I'm very eager to go use it. So this is just a cover for that cone filter. And then just to kind of church up the edges of our aluminum, um, I've got this like seal, it's like a weather stripping. If like you ordered an aftermarket intake, it would usually come with this weather stripping. And it's not gonna do anything other than kind of make it look a little more finished. But essentially this is just gonna be like one of those little Honda tuner intakes because I don't have, I don't have the time to build this right and I don't wanna put like weeks into this air box. So we're just gonna bolt this thing together in a way that's gonna work. And then long-term, we're gonna have to revisit this. I'm a little embarrassed, but here you go. It's our finished product. <laughs> I think this is my first like full on failure I've done since I started a YouTube channel, but this is just how it goes sometimes. If we're looking at the glass half full and it's always half full, um, it's gonna sound pretty dope because of the, uh, the stuff we removed on our factory intake pipe. So it's gonna sound like a V8 now when I get on it. So glass is half full. Another glass is half full is that this style filter although not ideal for like most people, will work where I live because it is rainy all year round uh, in Western Washington. And even in the middle of July, you could just get a week of straight rain. So we don't have a lot of dust. The particulates that are very easily bypass um, a, a filter like this, the washable cotton style, um, they won't really be much of an issue for me up here. Now, I'm going to have to address this at some point and build this the right way because I do like to travel out of state and I like to go to places where it's dry. So I'm gonna have to figure that out. But in the meantime, we do have a fully functional intake. I know that there's a lot of you guys that are yelling at your computers and your phones, why didn't he just remove the battery and build it right? And I should've. Hindsight's 2020. Now that I see all the work that I put into this box, what I should've done is just located this somewhere else. You can mount these sideways, I could put it in the back, whatever. And that would've made a lot more sense. But for now, we're just gonna hook up this battery as it sits, and then uh, in the future, whenever I build the real intake, I think this is gonna have to go. I'll build a nice heavy-duty intake box with a beautiful heavy-duty panel filter, and then we'll build a snorkel from scratch. I've, I've, there's some stuff that uh, you can do to make a snorkel pretty awesome without using like PVC pipe and stuff like that. So we'll probably build it out of like fiberglass or something like that. So that'll be the future video. And for those of you who like that kind of thing, look forward to that. But in the meantime, this video is over and I hope that you enjoyed it in some way or at least you saw me use some tools and stuff that might help broaden your horizons on your projects. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I've got a lot of how-to stuff on here um, and I like to just, I like to build, I like to go off road, I like to do all the stuff that a lot of you guys like to do. And if you wanna watch that kind of thing, just make sure you stick around. If you want to help support the channel, you go to thedirtlifestyle.com. We have t-shirts, hats, net gators, all that kind of stuff. And we also have a link to our Patreon account there as well. If you want to follow me on social media, I'm at Dirt Lifestyle Nate. We'll see you next time.